good? We're back in this thing. Today we're gonna be going over this trippy liquid water background effect. I see a lot of Instagram editors do it and it's becoming a lot more and more popular. There's a bunch of different ways to do it, but I got this really specific one off the sax music video. I'll have a link below as well as the editor, Green. He specifically hopped on the Discord call with me and showed me how to do these effects in specific for you guys. He's really for the editing community. So big shout out to him. I'll have his Instagram link below. So if you go ahead and use any of the knowledge from this video, Go ahead and follow him. He really deserves it. Super underrated editor. If you're new here, what I do is a lot of music video editing tutorials and kind of just breakdowns of effects. So if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do that. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year, as well as if you haven't liked and commented, that'd be greatly appreciated. It helps support me and push my content to other people. If you want to level up your music video editing game and also support the channel at the same time, you can go over to my website, brianelmata.com. Check out my presets and packs. They help you save time while editing as well as get some really cool looks. I'll have a link down below as well as a playlist of all the effects that you can do with the packs and presets. But yeah, guys, that's enough talking. Let's get into the video and break this effect down. All right, so now that we're in After Effects, I'm gonna go ahead and show you my effect versus Green's effect. They're both very similar. Like I said, he went ahead and showed me the two plugins that he used as well as just how to do it. So shout out to him for being so open with his sauce. You know, he was just excited to see what you guys can come up with. So you can see here, the first one was mine and the second one was his. Very similar in style. I did a few things different from what he told me, but as you can see, the looks are pretty much identical. I think it's a really crazy, like water looking effect. You can see it really looks different at every clip. He pretty much used it throughout the music video. I think it looks really crazy here. Very similar effect, um, just different values pretty much. I went ahead and did a few of them. This one looks really cool too. Just like a really smooth effect. So to obviously start off, find a clip that you want your effect to take place at. I'm just going to go ahead and use the same clip that I did at the beginning. And I'm just going to start off rotoscoping. You don't have to rotoscope for the effect, but I think it's a good way to add separation and have the viewer focus on something while the effect goes on. I'm just going to go ahead and rotoscope out our subject. Like I always say, do a good job rotoscoping the first few frames and then just go frame by frame and make sure that it doesn't mess up. So then once you've gone through and rotoscoped out every single frame, go ahead and click freeze. Just gonna lock in your rotoscope and separate your subject from the background, leaving just the subject. After that goes through and freezes all the frames, go ahead and close out of the layer. And then now you can see we have our subject rotoscoped out. I'm just gonna go ahead and increase the feather on the rotoscope a little bit and shift edge in just a tad. Then go ahead and duplicate that layer and remove the roto brush from there. Now the top layer is just the rotoscoped out subject and the bottom layer is the normal clip. So then to get that trippy distorted look, we're gonna use a plugin called Displacer. Displacer is free, I'll have it linked in the description. It's pretty much like displacement map, so if you're too lazy to install Displacer Pro, you can probably do something very similar with displacement map, but I do think Displacer Pro is a little bit better and kind of allows you to tweak the settings a lot more. The first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is make anchor point X and Y 50. Basically, if you don't do that, you can see any effect that you do doesn't start off in the center. It actually starts off in the top left. So you can see if I were to twist it, it would do that. And that's cool. Maybe you want it from there, but for us and for me right now, I just want it to take place in the middle. So moving the anchor point both to 50, it's gonna move it right in the dead center. And as far as kind of figuring out how you want the displacement to move, I would just look at your clip and kind of base it off the movement of the clip. So as you can see, the movement of the clip is a little bit to the left. So I'm gonna go ahead and keyframe the translate X and maybe just bring over the footage a little bit this way. I think that looks pretty cool so far. And then maybe bring up the scale a little bit. I'm also gonna keyframe that just so it kind of moves in and then they play with the rotation to make it line up with like the swoop of the building here. So 20% for our case, it's all basically based on your footage or whatever you want to do, but that is what I would recommend to do. And then I'm going to go ahead and reset the scale and reset the rotation as well as bring the translate X a little bit. I'm actually going to have it pass the subject a little bit here and then highlight all of them and click F9 or right click and easy ease. Now we can see we have a little bit of movement here. And it's just a little flowy. It's already looking pretty good. And then one thing that's really cool here is the map adjustments. And this is where you can get kind of more of a watery look. If you change the map softness, you can see how it starts getting a little bit more liquidy looking. Depending on how much or how little you want, you can go ahead and play around with that. I think something around 26 looks good for us. 
and we'll play that just to see what that looks like. That's looking really smooth actually. And then just some other things you can play with. Obviously the translate Y and X, uh, Y is gonna go up and down, X is gonna go side to side. The gamma, if you wanted to start the gamma off a little bit lower, you can kind of have it like melt in. So maybe if I started off at 0.6 and then went to the end and reset it to one, it would have more of like a starting at like completely black and then melting in. And we're actually gonna add something to replace the background with it's like a little glitch look. I think it looks really cool. Green used it throughout the edit, so figured might as well show you that as well. So then I would just add some hue and saturation if you want some color shifting. You don't have to, obviously, do whatever you want with the effect. But if you want some color shifting and just it to be a little bit more trippy, go ahead and do that. So I just added hue and saturation, and then I'm going to keyframe the channel range and go to the frame right before the last one so we can see what we're doing. And then just color shift it to whatever you want maybe this lightish blue looks cool for me double tap u and then highlight these keyframes as well as move that keyframe to the last just so it doesn't stop shifting now to get that glitchy background here that he has what i'm going to do is just duplicate our layer with the effects and then just remove it so it is a completely blank background here and then to this background layer we're going to add a plugin called amino diffusion and drag that on. And basically what this is, is a good digital version of a visual synthesizer. So basically what that's doing is just interpreting the colors and everything and just kind of moving the pixels around. If you want to add color, you can go ahead and add the color count to six. It's gonna introduce all these colors and make it look a little bit more like the actual footage. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. It's not necessary. You can do keep it black and white. And then I'm gonna play with the air across, bring it so it starts glitching right before it like kind of breaks like that. So maybe 0.99 for our case. And you can play with the air aside if you want, if you want it to like kind of glitch this way. I'm gonna leave it alone. And then you can also play with the width of certain colors depending on what you want. I think I'm gonna drag the width on width one up a little bit so it has this kind of a look where it's distorting the blacks and making the black a little bit wider. Basically each of these color widths is corresponding to the color above. So width two would affect two. So if you can see, I drag up the width of that one, it's gonna make the white bars thicker. If I drag this one, the red bars thicker, and so on. So basically just do whatever. I think these are the settings that I'm gonna end up with here, and then go all the way to the end. And I guess you don't really have to keyframe it, but you can if you want. And I'm just gonna keyframe the air across down a little bit so it has a little bit less of that glitch. And then again, just easy easing these. Now you can see that there's this glitch in the background and I think it just kind of fills out the clip a little bit more. If you wanted to, you could just go ahead and actually not even have that on and just have your clip playing. I just wanted to show you because that's what Green showed me. I thought it would be cool to maybe add some hue and saturation onto this as well. Go ahead and match the colors that are in the distortion to the colors of this. So just bring up the saturation all the way and then kind of just match the colors. It might just make it look a little bit smoother as best as you can and then go all the way to the end. And you could even add maybe like some RSMB or something, whatever, really whatever to this. But I thought it looked cool and kind of blurred the colors. So that way you can match them a little bit better. The RSMB kind of just gives it a little bit more of that distortion look. You can play with the blur amount. You can make it look really, really crazy. I'm not exactly sure if Green did that in the edit, but I know he likes playing around with RSMB and I think it's a pretty cool look just to make it look a little bit different.